Hi folks, well I'm back at the Montana Rancher and let's have a look and see what got accomplished since I took the videos of the trucks being unloaded and, and when we first got here. So I delivered the rough sawn Douglas fir trim for the fascia and around the perimeter of the floor. So the one by 12s in this pile, these wide boards that we cut on our mill, they're one inch thick, 12 inches wide. They will be placed on the perimeter all the way around the porch and the house. And we've got one by tens here and one by sixes there. And these will be used for fascia and window trim on the exterior. So let's have a look and see what they got done. We got the rough sawn planking on the floor and we're cutting all that ourselves. And we went to the Douglas fir for the trim and the fascia because there's a severe shortage of cedar. So we are kicking the cedar habit right now. And folks watching who are expecting their meadowlark log home uh, soon will be using will be using fir on that uh, roof fascia up there. That's not installed yet, but on, on around the perimeter of the roof and the below the on that metal below the logs and the windows and doors will be Douglas fir as well as the porch decking. Simply because it's not available or not enough of it is available. So we're cutting our own material. So here we started putting the cedar on, but we can't get enough cedar. So we'll wrap that in Douglas fir. I did that on my own house and it turned out great. So this is the Montana ranch with a classic sunburst out the front here. I told Denise and Michael, the owners here, I'm, I'm the inspector. I came to inspect our crew and make sure they did everything correctly. So we can peek on the, at the windows because they haven't got them trimmed yet. Nice job on the foam up top. That black material is foam that compresses as the logs settle. And there's this angle iron slot right in there. The angle iron goes into a slot in the logs so the logs can slide over it and allow for settling for the logs to come down. So these are the Sierra Pacific windows. My opinion is I'm going to recommend uh, the Sierra Pacific H3 uh, for the clad window and the Coeur d'Alene window for the vinyl. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. These are good windows, but I like the Coeur d'Alene window. And if you're a local uh, supply, uh, get a local window where you're uh, near where you live or building out, you can certainly choose that. The Sierra Pacific is a nationwide brand available everywhere, but it's a vinyl window. So these are sliders. These are the double hungs. Let's have a peek inside. Isn't that beautiful? The nice thing about the Montana Rancher is you've got the same dimensions as the Meadowlark Rancher the only difference being that right there. So isn't that awesome? You look at that view there of the, the those log valleys, <clears throat> excuse me. Those big logs that are in a V shape carry the roof structure for the valleys. And then the truss is over here. Some folks designed this so that's completely visible in the great room living room area so it becomes a visible open truss in the this cathedral area all all the areas high vaulted ceilings there's no claustrophobic feeling in this house which is really great it's just a high ceiling and spacious and airy let's get a look at a few different angles this is the back entry door small porch this does not yet have the the planking installed yet. You can see the how we use a pressure treated joist for the the framing. It's all very overbuilt with a double rim on the outside. You might ask, why do we put a double rim on the outside? We actually don't have to. We just do. So it's extra strong and we have a nice place to screw our railing posts into. Most of what you see is going to be overbuilt more than necessary so we got these nice long overhangs four feet standard on a house so 
uh, it sheds the water and protects the end of the house. And the eaves are long. Almost three feet on the eaves coming out the back. So that's the back of the house. Let's jump back inside. Let's get a little different view of that front from this angle. Isn't that pretty? You look through that truss right there. And you look into the truss in the front. These beams are massive. They're bigger than they look like. I think that beam above me is a good 14 inches. I believe in engineering that would only call for a 10 inch log. And so most of our beams are going to be oversized for what you actually need. The truss material is oversized. We don't need material that big in that truss, but we do it anyhow. We try to go for a squeak-free, sag-free floor. Right below me is a trap door for the, you take this lid off and that'll go down into the crawl space. But um, the floor systems are this weather resistant OSB and we are going to use mostly Advantech, which is a, a extreme weather resistant flooring squeak-free system that we are starting to use. This was the Gold Edge OSB, which is also a good product. But we, we put floors down that don't squeak. They don't, they don't sag. They don't, you can't hear anything. They're just flat. I'm not even sure of the layout if I, unless I look at the plans. Obviously, the doors are not yet installed. But over here, let's see. This is kitchen. In that area. I'm standing in the great room, living room. And over there, I'm not sure. That's a bathroom, I believe. Maybe a bedroom in that corner. And this will be an interior door, log gable all the way up. I'm thinking they're putting a little window in the top of that door, above the door. This will be the master bedroom and bath. How would you like to have a vaulted ceiling like that for your bedroom and your bath? That is one nice feature about these ranchers. You've got tall ceilings vaulted in every area of the house, except the bathrooms. A lot of times they'll put a flat ceiling on the bathrooms. Now the doors are behind the plastic being protected and those are not yet installed. So Michael and Denise have been sitting in these chairs enjoying their new house. Now, because of COVID, a lot of things have been so far behind the concrete people and the different supplies, but we've been keeping up pretty well, but they're behind schedule. Everything's a little behind schedule, but not too terribly bad. We're uh, getting them wrapped up in a couple days. And then as soon as we got a few other projects out of the way and they get the, some framing finished on the inside, I'll bring a crew in and we're going to clean up the inside, buff it, sand parts of it. We get all the logs polished. Basically, think of it as a very extensive cleaning job. The end result will look pretty much like you see here with the, the rustic effect and all that, but it'll feel a lot smoother because I'm feeling slivers from peeling and a little bit of dust and dirt and things like that, sawdust. So it's a little bit rough. So we don't want this to be rough. So we're gonna buff it with a wheel that it's a nylon bristle. We polish everything with it, all the logs that is. The ceiling's ready, but then we do a deep clean. We get it sparkly clean, then we varnish it with two coats, uh, I'm sorry, with four layers, four coats of plant-based varnish. Interior poly clear, it's called crystal urethane. And then we chink or caulk between, these about the size of my finger, a bead in every area to completely seal it off. So this entire area needs to be varnished and chinked. So we'll come back and do that after a, a few other jobs are completed. And it's a, it's a busy time frame, but we'll get to it. And then next summer, we'll come back and we'll stain the outside. 
that is a job for the next year. You don't always don't do that in the fall or the winter. You do that in the in the warmer summer months. Okay, well, let's get a look over here. This is where they're going to build their 18 by 24 Montana cabin next year. So that's for a project for next year. We had an early October snow, which is very unusual for us, but it's all melting. Let's have a walk around. The Montana Rancher, the Meadow Lark Rancher are very popular models. There's a trench that's not completely covered up. That's a water line going to that cabin, I believe, out to the well. What a beautiful spot in paradise. This is Northwest Montana. I'm in the extreme Northwest corner of Montana. I'm less than two miles from, Ida, uh, from uh, British Columbia, Canada, to the North and I don't know, two or three miles to Idaho over that direction. We are right in the very corner of the northwest corner of the state. I know I love it up here. That's why people build houses up here. It's beautiful and remote. You got millions of acres of public land up here, up in those hills. I hate to break the news to you, but Montana's got to be God's country. Actually, that is good news. So I don't hate to break the news to you. Look at those colors. It's like New England, but no red. We don't have any red colors. And the larch is, these larch trees are what we build our houses out of mostly because uh, they're such a strong tree. And if you look through the mountains are covered or mixed with the larch. It's the only needle tree in the world, if I'm correct, that, sh that sheds its needles. It's a deciduous needle tree. Right there. Those trees, those yellow trees are in that house. Now, some people get so worried about the poor trees or killing the trees in the forest but these people probably live in the city and they're uninformed. Let me just share with you what, what happens. Those mountains, and there's millions of acres of those mountains in our area. And there are millions of acres, thousands of square miles of forest just like that. If you don't thin those trees out, uh, pick a tree here and there and thin them out, they will burn up like they do in California because they don't log their forest down there. And it'll burn the whole mountain up and it'll burn all the wildlife. Think of the birds, the squirrels, the bears, the wolverines, all the wildlife in those forests will all perish when the fire goes through it. It's, it's complete nonsense to allow these mountains to burn up and not thin the forest out. If the forest was thinned out properly, we wouldn't be having these fires in California or elsewhere. So I don't like to hear people complaining about you know, us killing the trees we're, we're stewards of the forest and anything else is not taking care of the forest. So it's nonsense. Let's just get that straight. We're being good stewards to thin these trees out and build these beautiful homes with them. We're not harming the forest. We're helping the forest. Okay. So I think most people understand that, but there are a few people who don't and we need to log the forest. We need to thin these out, take the tree, some trees out so it can be healthy. And there's, it helps the grass to grow for the food for the animals. And so we've got a surplus of larch. There are just millions and tens of millions of these trees all over this area. And thankfully, the state of Montana is doing a great job of, of uh, putting some sales up where people are logging these and uh, the state properties and even the Forest Service is doing timber sales. And you're seeing stewardship getting back it's becoming uh the trend now again to steward the forest after about 30 years of going the wrong direction so we're very thankful for that and encouraged by what we see that we're going to start stewarding the forest like right now there's a movement to grow organic food and steward the soil steward people's health so anyhow i got i'm rambling about that but i'm passionate about taking care of our world and that includes 
farming properly, organically, taking care of our animals, and taking care of these forests, and which means you've got to harvest them, you've got to thin them out. See how beautiful this looks all thinned out? This was a thick stand, and they took a bunch of trees out, and uh, they got some, some uh, revenue for these trees that they took out, and they made a beautiful park-like area that's left over. It's beautiful. This is how it looks like after you get done logging. They space the trees out about 50 feet apart like that. Some more and some less. And it's a, it's a fire safe area. Isn't that beautiful? Otherwise it's just brushy. You can't even walk through it hardly. Well, I got off on, on, the, on a different subject. So I'll close off my little talk. Uh, I'll come back when this house is finished or when we're varnishing maybe. So those are the boards we cut. And I came to get the machine and take it home. On the local jobs, we don't charge the customer for our machine. Normally we just take it to the job site and use it uh, for lifting our materials around, unloading the logs and stuff. And I'm taking the remnant material back home, leftovers of this job, some flooring and different things. Folks, thanks so much for watching. God bless.